2022 select board meeting. I will call this meeting to order. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, in accordance with Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, I announce that this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media and Zoom and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting. Then say, if no one is recording, let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. Um, executive session has been canceled tonight, so we will move to open session. It will be um, brought up at another meeting. Mm -hmm. We will go to public comments. Public comments. Is there anybody here on Zoom for public comments? Nope. See anybody, Jane? Nope. Can we see everybody from here? Is there anybody on? Hey. Thank you. I just want to make sure there wasn't any hands raised. All right. We have a consent agenda, and we have warrants AP 2307, AP 307S, AP 2310V. AP 23095, AP 239, AP 238S, and AP 2308. We also have a special one day alcohol license, wine and malt for lead foot brewing. And as I understand, we want to take that out for discussion. Is that correct? Yes, Andy? please. Okay, so we won't vote on that right now. Uh, we have a special one-day alcohol license, wine and malt. Uh, Jenny Lynn Fontaine from UMass Amherst TOC, Inc. at six concourse concession areas in McGuirk Stadium on September 17th, October 8th, 15th, and 29th, and November 26th. Do we we have, have, would you have to take that one out, too? Do we? I don't know, do we? No. No, no there's just an issue that I want to talk about with the first one. Uh, special one day alcohol license wine and malt Jenny Lynn Fontaine UMass Amherst TOC Inc at the South End Zone South Hospitality Plaza in McGuirk Stadium on September 17th October 8th 15th and 29th and November 26th we have an automatic amusement device license amendment is that being taken off or is that still on that's still on that's still on um, Fun Hub LLC, DBA, Fun Hub Action Park, 367 Russell Street, Unit H-06, amend license to add six devices from 25 devices to 31 devices. Motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of the one item that's been pulled up for discussion. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor of those? Well, I mean, should we ask for any discussion on that? Because the- You can have discussion. We can or can't? You can. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because the, <clears throat> excuse me, the other two for you must don't have times on it. Does it, that matter? It's, it's, uh, it's during the games. During the games. The games oh. that day. I don't see any attachments on here. Yeah. It's, uh, Up at that the was top. Still. I can provide it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that's fine. I just, one was a little more specific than the other. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't care. That's fine. Let him sell. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on that? So they give us a schedule. Let me just don't tell us when these times are and the locations are there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the uh, consent agenda? Aye. 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 Uh, we will discuss the Lead Foot Brewing LLC at Maple Valley Creamery, 102 Millie Valley Road looking for September 11th, 18th, and 25th from 2 to 6 p.m. and on September 21st from 5 to 8 p.m. So uh, I, the reason I wanted this out is n not necessarily because it's Leadfoot Brewing at Maple Valley Creamery. It's just the more that I get involved with these things, the more I learn that it feels like we, at least definitely me, do not understand this process completely. Jane was talking yesterday at the Tuesday meeting of the building inspector and everybody about all kinds of 
issues that seem to be left off of some of these applications. And again, I'm not picking on this person. Uh, and the fact that there, we don't charge a fee for this and there's a lot of work that has to be done uh, by Jane or Jennifer or Carolyn for that matter. And I think we just need to, not necessarily tonight, but at some point discuss a, a process that needs to be gone through so that everybody's on the same page with these applications and, and if, as I understand this one was brought in a couple of days ago and basically said look I gotta I gotta have an answer on the 7th uh, which puts people into uh, panic mode I gotta get this work done and it, it just doesn't seem fair and right so Again, I just want to talk about that, and maybe Jane can explain the process for us, just so we are all on the same page. But it looks like to me also, since you have brought it up, that um, this one venue seems to be changing what his intent was to begin with um, on a lot of different things. First, it was a food, food truck, and then it was an occasional brewing truck that was there, um, and then we have uh, entertainment on some days. We also have um, car shows on several days during the week. I mean, there's a whole different variety of different things that are happening at this one location. And I'm not sure with all the licenses, do they cover it? Um, I believe the planning board <coughs> gave them an okay to be open later until seven instead of six which was originally the plan at six o'clock and then they extended it to seven p.m and then this is to eight o'clock eight o'clock now and they, so this they one, always serve they're always open till eight eight right so now we want to be open until eight yeah i think what it seemed like was that there and it's i mean this venue is probably the one that is doing license, but I think we ran into like another venue that just didn't have any licenses at all and was doing kind of whatever they wanted until somebody else spoke up and they got stopped by that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a lot of businesses out there that want to do a lot more community involvement. And I think there's just a lot of, in my opinion, um, excess unnecessary paperwork and licenses for things like you know, they just, for having somebody sitting there and playing guitar, it's like, oh, no, you gotta pay $100, you gotta do this, you gotta fill out paperwork, you gotta file it to here, you gotta go to there. So it's just, in my opinion, I think there's a lot of silly excess paperwork involved with something that just seems so, like, small. It is, and it's part of our bylaws that have jurisdiction over a lot of this that's happening. Um, and that's why they end up having to do more than they should. So yeah. um, if we can get to our new formed bylaw committee and have them take a look at it, um, and maybe going forward because their season will be ending, of course, with, I hate to say the word, snow flying or whatever is happening in colder weather, that you know it's not going to be um, you know, able to have all of these functions and, and coming up. So maybe for the coming year we could have something else more concrete of how to apply for these and have them plan out their year a little bit better on what kind of functions that they want to have for the year. Um, I don't think they should be coming back to us every time we have a board meeting asking for licensing or extensions or granting one day, two day liquor licenses. UMass comes to us uh, at the beginning of their season and has given us now all of this um, their dates that they're going to have now that they know when their home games are going to be when that schedule is set So that's how we get these in front of us for theirs and they include all of them Whether it be at one end of the field or the other end of the field they have to apply for both um, So maybe something could happen again with these other venues that are 
I'm not saying I'm not out to stop anybody's livelihood mm -hmm. and right. what they can do, but uh, maybe we can just streamline it a little bit better so that they're mm -hmm. not having to come back all the time. So this is the first year for that because I mean UMass has been doing this for years. I mean this is yeah. a learning curve on mm -hmm. on the smaller businesses in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know, and, and when Joyce Joyce and I were on the board together before, um, I remember Jennifer and David came forward. This actually was a streamlining of a of a process. We used to be sitting here, and there would be objections from the fire chief or somebody. So they streamlined it so they all of those approvals had to happen first before they came to the board. And so I think this is just a continuous improvement. Now we have other venues coming in and they have maybe different issues than we had before. Thank you, Jamie. So that makes sense. Um, I'd just like to say, Amy, um, that I can provide you all the master in laws on this. Many of these are state-run licenses. We don't have a lot of control over that. So you know, we can try to, uh, you know, from common victuals to yeah. alcohol licensing to Sunday entertainment licenses to the town park, those are all to the state. So that might have to be addressed on the state level. But they've been in place for no, I'll, I'm sure that they have. I just yeah. think this is a lot of job security for some people that doesn't need to exist, in my opinion. Some of it's mandated for their positions to do the inspections. Well, no, no, no. I just meant it just seems like a lot of excess stuff. Like if, you know, people are busy that, you know, I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it, but it just seems like a lot of excess paperwork for people that have other things to do. Yeah, maybe not, something not necessarily for business owners, but like for you or future. someone else in the town office. You know, just future seems like a gender, lot. as I said, the bylaw committee could take a look at it too and yeah. just see how. And we at could. the state level, the legislative delegation can put it on their radar. Maybe they're already looking at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you say, Jane, about the uh, the one day? This is a this is supposed to be a, a special event license. Or is, is, is it, does it have a name? Yeah, the special one day licenses are, are not going to run a business from. They are literally for special events. Um, so that might be a fair, that might be, you know, and you, uh, you know, an entity, a person can have up to 30 special events per year. So a lot of times you'll see them in communities in the summers or, you know, seasonally, you know, for October, you know, or spring, you know, crap, there's all these sorts of things. So Special one days are, are meant to be for events. So generally, you know, the select board as a license commission can ask what's the event, how many people are you expecting, and, and that kind of happens in the town offices and we, we try to share that information so that um, if they need a detailed officer to direct traffic or if they need, you know, um, parking issues looked at, you know, we can try to facilitate those things for them so they don't get stuck on the day of opening until, hey, Hold on, you can't do this. So um, there are those things that you know can be facilitated. Also, with special one-day license, the alcohol has to be purchased through a state-certified um, location. So if it's a farmer brewery, they can provide it. Um, but there is quite a listing of um, vendors that are approved by the state um, commercially for the sale of it. You can't just go to the package store and buy it. You know, it has to be. Very regulated. Okay, so do we have any concerns about this particular one as we're sitting here right now that have been brought up? Um, something the license commission can ask um, if, based on the venue. You can ask um, if you're looking at a venue that's, you know, a public venue that a lot of people are coming to, do you want uh, the, the alcohol licensing to have? have the area cordoned off, roped off, so that people who are entering their car in before they enter where they purchase, as opposed to kids, you know, here and then entering over there. That's pretty common. Um, the ABCC, um, you know, can give you guidelines on that, about how to, how to handle that. You know, some, some um, cities and towns have, have actually asked for tents with sidewalks to be provided, and a seating area and a room section for people to consume alcohol only in that area, and not take it out well, it certainly is something for us to think about because now we've come into the college mm -hmm. uh, time of the year where they, college kids may be interested in attending some of these venues. 
So, you know, maybe it is up to us to take a look at the licensing and how they are um, distributing their alcohol. Uh, do they have an area where people have to stay to drink? Uh, an identification process, who looks at the IDs? And all of that, I think that needs to be brought forward to us. Yeah, and I think a lot of times, you know, our job is to protect our businesses. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they don't understand the liability that they're taking on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, to come to us and sit down and, and talk and we can guide them, you know, in the town offices as to how to make it safe for them. So should we have this person come in? I don't think it's necessary. It's on private property, though. Like, it's not like it's a public one where you just have, like, people... You know what I mean? But it, it's still there. We're issuing them a license. So, so, so it's on can you us. Speak to that, Amy. Um, if the public is attending it, you mm -hmm. think it's on, on a private property, it's still mandated by law that that the public has a reasonable right to expect to be safe on that premises. So it's almost like when you get a special one day, it's similar to a, a full blown alcohol license for a premises, a location. And, and that's why it's governed that way. Have we had any issues with in the past? They haven't done this in the past where they've had mm -hmm. so many pop-ups of um, the brewery at, at this location. And I don't know of any other place in town that it has. Does anybody else? No. And I'm just wondering, we don't have any sign-offs from the fire chief, police chief. Mm -hmm. I did receive, before I left, building and police have signed off, not fire. So if you voted, it would be Okay. You know, I, I think again, I think, you know, I certainly don't have a problem issuing them right now, but and again with the sign off on, from the fire chief, but I think that's something that the bylaw committee certainly needs to take a look at in venues and what, what really needs to take place. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I mean, they we've allowed them to do this for so many days this year already. <laughs> and so I don't I think it wouldn't be fair and reasonable to deny them at this point, but I think for next year, like you said, Joyce, we need to come up with mm -hmm. a policy not only for this, but for lots of things that are happening in town where permits are required that everybody knows the rules and everybody deals with who they're supposed to deal with. Mm -hmm. So um, that said, I'll make a motion to approve this this evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also tightening up applications just so that people aren't giving it two days before and expecting it. Correct. Right. The next meeting. Yeah. yeah. On average, so, most communities require applications two months in advance so that they can fit them in to get everybody on the offices approval. And, right. You know, we we do approval. have that. If you can remember, during our bigger big events throughout uh, last year, we had last minute requests. So. Um, it's 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 definitely an issue. Well, and yeah. there's no reason that we can't charge at late fee. Yeah, there's a and and I think um, we've we've actually been talking about a lot, especially like after the Asparagus Festival when you had two large events, the the impact of that. So there are that is definitely getting addressed with the bylaw committee. That was kind of the catalyst actually, is because we don't mm -hmm. know what's mm -hmm. to, what to enforce, what's not, what's been allowed. Um, I would. I just want to say, on behalf of those departments who are doing the inspections, those those are safety inspections. So those <coughs> those permits, those licenses are for safety. It's mm -hmm. not for anything that's in excess of getting more money from the owner or anything like that. No, and I, I think that's what we're looking like, actually. That maybe at this point, if we tell people ahead of time that we expect them to send their set up their venues for the following year and to have something more concrete for us and not the last minute. I think they, they should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Knowing forward what they've done this year and what's come about, they could possibly set up more mm -hmm. uh, times of yeah. what they and can And we've do. had those meetings. We had, after those events, we had meetings with those larger venues. Well, this seems to be a weekly is. thing, so this is something that we probably would need to include them in also. So, yep. So. I, I think you, you can enforce that of how much warning, but to be prepared when you get the phone call on your cell phone about something not being approved, that we just be consistent. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that is that a motion, Randy? Yes. 
Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, DPW director appointment, we will delay that until another meeting. Uh, Hadley Media Goals. Alex, would you like to present your goals this evening? Sure. Um, Evening, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Very well, well thank, thank you. you. Good. So, um, it's not me presenting you with goals, it's more or less me grabbing goals from you. <coughs> The select board to see what the select board wants from the department um, and we can also talk about a little bit about um, what I've been doing this past month too if you'd like also okay we're, we're gonna see you all this. over the community page <laughs> <laughs> you've been putting yourself out there and you've been doing a great job um, so I mean if anybody wants to share we're not going to go into an extended if you want us to set up some goals for you of what we expect um, we could do that mm -hmm. um, you could tell us what your expectations are of your job and what you feel is uh, viable and what you can do for us at this point um, you know all the meetings that you have to do or, or people expect to see so um, you know we could go from there and you know then come back to you with what goals we might have for you this we thought we were getting goals from you tonight so if you want goals from us tell us what oh. you did you have uh... oh no I had a goal for you uh -oh. <laughs> like one of the biggest complaints I get is how much people hate the website which website the Hadley website it's not it's not under, it's not under it's you under it's not me oh, <laughs> dang <laughs> but but, but so that, that is thing. Actually, yeah. that's be a future agenda item yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's yeah Man. Not easy to navigate. Make your own. Oh my gosh, yeah. people hate that it's not easy to navigate. Mm -hmm. It's well, and, and Amy, things get well, lost. I was thinking of. I think we'll dovetail in, into your thought process. Uh, one of the things that the select board identified at one of our earlier meetings was the town coming up with a, a really a communication plan, a communication program, mm -hmm. and it makes sense to me that that isn't one individual that that would fall to. Mm -hmm. So the website is absolutely huge on that list, but also our social media presence, um, transparency of covering as many meetings as possible, which mm -hmm. falls to Hadley Media. But I would love if we get to the point where there's some sort of a committee formed to come up with a communication plan that you would participate in that. So it, 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 to my understanding, there was a Hadley Media Advisory Board, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And that, and that <laughs> this, this, that disbanded, I believe. Um, is that is that something we could try to revive at some point? Good. We can because actually, um, in other comments over the community page this this weekend, where people were not liking Spectrum, and I know that Spectrum is coming up for uh, a renewal of its contract, which would include Hadley Media. Mm -hmm. um, so which you would be a part of also so we're going to have to somehow rejuvenate some people um, to at least look at what's our options and um, doing the contract it took us some time um, to get the contract we have with Spectrum um, two or three years we had to uh, yes so to, we, are, we are actually probably a little behind right now yeah that, that needs to get started pulled together immediately yeah yeah so people want to know what their options are, or if not, what is that, uh, Spectrum going to do for us? Mm -hmm. So those are the things also that are on the... We just spent 14 grand to get Spectrum onto Mill Valley Road. Correct, but that doesn't mean that <laughs> even with another communications that it still wouldn't be there because uh -huh. the lines are there. So, I mean, that was the problem is that there weren't no lines there. So there are lines there now, but the, we only have two in the area. We have Comcast and we have uh, Spectrum. Those are the only two. Then the complaints are equal across the board. Yes, they are. If you are. have Comcast, yes. you wish you had somebody different. If yes. you have Spectrum, you wish you had somebody different. Right. Correct. I mean, um, there's Affinity up in is, Does anybody, anybody have any idea how the town gets its own uh, 
cable company like South Hadley did? So South Hadley's not cable. South Hadley is just purely internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Levered is too. Through their electric light department. They don't have, they go for Comcast for cable. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. so you're asking um, whether it makes sense for us to resurrect the Hadley Media Advisory Committee? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I'm fine with that. It's been a while. Um, We're overdue, so I guess yeah. it's, it's time. So. If you could put on um, Hadley Media that we are looking for people to join a um, advisory advisory committee. committee for our cable internet, and I think it also um, part of uh, part of the challenge we had before was there was not a clear direction. direction from the select board as to the role of that advisory committee. So there was a lot of um, Right. Pulling so, of hair and gnashing of teeth for a while. So we want clarity on that. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's something that you could help us by looking at how it's written currently. Um, and then we also should define who would be on that committee. I believe previously there was, I was the liaison from the select board. Mm -hmm. And there were three community members. And I don't, I don't think there was any criteria per se. There were. Um, you know, people who are interested in the programming. So, would that be the cable advisory committee and not the Hadley Media Advisory Committee? Then, but there, there's yeah, two. Yeah, I, I was looking one. for clarification on that as well because you do have a cable advisory committee in place right now. Right, just haven't done anything since last year. Would they want to take on the role of the? Well, other? it's two different charges. Yeah. You could, but I think you'd have to reach out to those members to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could do that also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And I, I think where we landed is that the role of the advisory committee was to help Hadley Media primarily with programming mm -hmm. um, in terms of determining what the town is looking for, um, helping survey residents, et cetera, yeah. um, as opposed to any sort of oversight. That was where we got into kind of a lot of back and forth where they were, they were unclear for a while on what the role was. So are you saying that you'd rather have just a helping role instead of an oversight role? Or, or well, oversight right? meaning they're not, um, they would not be responsible for overseeing you as an, an employee. Right. Right. That clearly goes to select board. Yeah, the town administrator and select board. Mm -hmm. But they would be um, helping come up with programming. So for example, you know, maybe they might say, gee, we don't want to stream some of these old black and white movies anymore. We think that people would rather see sports sports from Hobson's Academy. Right. Um, right. That kind of thing, which you've done with Granby. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Actually, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are in a process of one, bringing in more, taking out some of the old unlocal programming and bringing in more local programming, whether it be in Hadley or around Western Mass, because there's a lot of programming that you can, we can use. For example, I aired uh, the Sheriff's um, Forum from Northampton. I grabbed that from That's Northampton great. Media mm -hmm. um, and aired it on 192 um, mm -hmm. a few times. Um, I actually took our um, Sheriff's profiles from Granby that me and my staff did and brought them over here because I shared with the rest of the stations in Hampshire County. Um, and another thing too, I have already been in contact with the schools. We're gonna be starting sports next week, not this week. Um, sadly, I'm only one person. I can't do two games at once. Um, and also, also got to make sure that these meetings are getting covered uh, as a priority over sports. But sports will be um, starting to come and being extremely robust. So um, get ready for that. You do have to throw in a couple of polka programs, though, for these people in town. <laughs> there will be polka. Here. Yeah. There will it's be a, polka. It's a mandatory thing in Hadley, so a few little polka things here and there would be great. <laughs> I'm from Palmer, so I know the whole polka thing. Like a, like a Sunday <laughs> yeah, morning thing, you know, they would like to hear a little polka. So That could be done. That would be good. <laughs> polka on Sunday. I know there's polka throughout the week, but I think Sunday would be a better day for it. Yeah, they usually have yeah, Sunday morning polka. I'll be on the lookout for polka programs. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, Goal one. one party. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it for right now, and then we'll talk about 
think about us uh, amongst us and what we would like for the goals. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I think we've already come up with a few ideas and you know we could take off from there and maybe in October we'll get back to what we could do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, Everything going well with you? Absolutely. Um, there have been a few surprises down the road, but I've been taking care of them, and I'll be meeting with the finance committee tomorrow to take care of um, some things that have to be uh, buttoned up. But otherwise, um, things are going smoothly. Good. Just so you know, when you say surprise and then mention finance committee in one sentence, <laughs> <laughs> future you had, reference. You had a little issue with planning board last night. Right. So. Um, for whatever reason, we have the stream box, which I'm going to eventually uh, phase out of our operations. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, I couldn't, um, one, the thing was running slow, slower than um, our internet in, the, in, the, in my building. Um, and, and for whatever reason, I just couldn't get anything to stream. It was taking a little while. It was, I was just better off just recording it, and it will be, um, upload it once I get back. But um, okay. we're pretty much gonna do something like this except without the um, audio board or the audio thing here. Um, it's pretty much gonna be a laptop recording onto another laptop and streaming from there. Okay. So can I ask for clarif clarification from the board? You would like to revitalize the advisory committee mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, reach out to the Charter Review Committee to see if they would be interested in doing Tricky. both. Doing that both. If, Is that? If, if they would like to. Okay. If they don't, then we could advertise for. So you, if, if there is a general no, OK to move forward and put something on the website looking for that. Okay. And we'd want to make sure they understood what the yeah. role was of that other committee, too, so that they knew. Yeah. yeah. which. I probably need more, a little bit more detail on that other committee. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. do you have any takers yet for uh, filling the position, or not yet? Anything yet, Jen? No. Nothing yeah, yet. we're it's it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. Okay. Um, we put something on handshake, yeah. um, and reach. I'm reaching out to some of the area colleges, um, trying to get the word out, possibly visit the colleges to. Um, uh, see if there's any interest and talk about it in person try to get some resumes right on the spot so. an internship this year would be great on some people i'm sure maybe i'd rather i'd rather look for the person first and maybe next right. school year we can work on the internship, internship. Yeah, it's a little yeah. 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 sometimes that internship develops into the job yeah you definitely know, sometimes you know because i know of uh, i met a few lifeguards this year and that's what their intent was was to you know, do their internship and then proceed into their job for the following year. So um, sometimes that does help too. So we'll let you go at it. And just there, I was just checking in on that. Yep, totally. And I'll let you guys know if, it, if anything comes up. And um, obviously, I believe that you have to prove that person correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sounds cool. good, Alex. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All thank right. you for your time. Thank you. Uh, notice of hearing of 8 Pine Hill Road. We are do not need to have one. That hearing has been canceled. The um, water bill has been paid. We will move on to abatement of application for water and sewer bills. And I have to abstain from this discussion. This gentleman is my daughter's father-in-law. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> Um, and that is at 123 Russell Street for the following bills. And there were several that he is looking for abatements with. Um, Do we have a recommendation here? Am I missing it? I'm looking to also. Has there been been one from the um, either the collector or the DPW office? DPW. I think Kim's on here as well. Uh, good evening. Uh, the DPW would recommend not giving an abatement. Uh, the <clears throat> we have ne we ha he hasn't even reached out to us directly to come to the property and inspect the meter, see if we can find anything, and or possibly test it. 
there, there has been zero communication with us. I know the collector's office has reached out to them and I believe the tenant did have a leak. Uh, you'd, I'd have to clarify that with the collector's office, uh, either Kim or Sue, uh, but we would recommend not giving an abatement. So at this time, um, motion to abate. So this is dated back to 721. Hmm. So the bills are 721 and then all of the ones for um, 22. So do we want to wait for him to have contact with you? How do we want to proceed or just not uh, approve these right now? You don't find anything wrong with what's what's in any of the abatements. You said there could be a leak. Well, well we don't there, there a leak could, where in the house? in the house a uh, a fixture or a toilet or something. Okay. And I believe that uh, the collector's office uh, Kim, Kim is on did go thing. out to the property and I think there was some admission to a leak by the tenant or something. I have to clarify that with them. Okay. But yeah. the the water department has not been requested to come to the property. Right. Kim, can you want to put Kim on? She's, she's able to a little bit oh, louder. Yeah. Louder, louder, Kim. Hello. There we go. Can you give us any uh, feedback on these abatements that are being asked for? Hello. Oh, there she goes. Kim? Yes. Okay. Can you give us any feedback on the um, abatement requests that we're looking at right now? Uh, sure. This is for 123 Russell Street? Correct. Kim, I'm sorry, it's unclear to me. Um, so you spoke with the tenant. Did the tenant make it clear that the landlord, uh, the property owner, was aware of that as well? Yes. Okay. yes. was aware yeah. and in the past we haven't ordered an abatement where it's due to 
maintenance and repair toilet. effectively. That in, seems in the like property. a yeah. It seems like yeah. a business owner versus tenant issue, not really ours. So if he wants to pass it on to the tenant, that's his responsibility. Yeah. And I move that we do not accept this. Theory. Oh, second. Mm -hmm. So motion is to either abate or not to abate, and your motion is not to abate. No. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Scott. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Uh, resignation. Uh, Lieutenant Cook, could we have your presence at the table? Thank you. So you're going to be sitting in, in that seat for a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> the hot seat. Hot seat. I didn't want to call it the hot seat because it's, it's not really a hot seat. Should have worn your shorts. <laughs> he was out on road duty today. Let's see. So we have um, a resignation of a part-time police officer. You want to take that one first? Certainly, uh, Tom Shabbat <clears throat> uh, has worked in the capacity of, of a part-time, a full-time and a sergeant, a, a part-time, full-time officer and a sergeant. He went back to part-time, but now has another full-time job. And he felt that it was not fair to us um, <clears throat> to try to work his new full-time job and also retain his part-time employment. So he has voluntarily stepped aside and uh, we thank him for his years of service. Okay. I would sadly accept the resignation of Officer Shabbat. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you, Thomas Shabbat, for your service. Appreciate it. Wish you the best. We have a promotion of a dispatcher. Yes. Uh, this is part of a, a, a increase to our staffing uh the batch that we're going to go through tonight is uh, a batch uh, one batch of two uh the first one that we're doing this evening in dispatch is a promotion from a part-time dispatcher to full-time and rachel farron uh, is that employee she came to us as a certified 911 dispatcher with experience working for the berkshire county sheriff's department as well as the towns of dalton and north adams she has been working for the Hadley Public Safety Department for the last two months as a part-time dispatcher and has already uh, helped fill several open shifts. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, having Rachel come on board as a full-time dispatcher while she attends online school at STCC. Perfect. Motion to approve the promotion of Rachel Farron from part-time to full-time dispatcher. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Rachel. And our second uh, is a, a new hire, and this is essentially backfilling the uh, part-time position just vacated by Rachel Farron's promotion to full-time. And uh, we're bringing on uh, Halia Wyman. Uh, she's a longtime Western Mass resident with a work history both in the fast-paced food service industry as well in as well as in a professional office environment. She has also gained valuable experience as a volunteer assisting the public, taking and directing calls and filing paperwork. And we are looking forward to having Halia as a member of our team as a part-time 911 dispatcher. Perfect. Mitch, what's, excuse me, Lieutenant, what's the uh, training involved in this? When, so, like bringing somebody on brand new like that? So uh, someone who's brand new, she will have to attend a 40-hour basic telecommunicator course, mm -hmm. and she'll also have to complete the um, the 911 operator course, which is a two-day class, and then the training could uh, could be anywhere between four and six months on the job training. Okay. Okay. All right. Motion to um, accept the recommendation to hire Halia Wyman as part-time dispatcher. Second. Okay. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And special police force to full-time officer. All right. And uh, Harry Santiago uh, joins us uh, from the world of Zoom. And uh, top right. 
Oh, there he is. Hi, Harry. <laughs> uh, Harry Santiago's name may look familiar to some of you, and it should. Mm -hmm. Harry came to us in 2018, and he was the first and the only person that the chief had ever sponsored through the Reserve Intermittent Police Academy. He quickly proved his worth and was promoted to full-time in 2019 and served honorably for three years. One thing you need to understand about Harry is that he is a family man. He stayed on, the, stayed on the night shift with us so that he was always able to get to the sporting events and be with his family when they had finished work or school for the day. This is one of the reasons he felt it necessary to leave in 2021 when he was offered a job in Chicopee. He thought that it would give him even more time with his family and help his finances. But Harry missed his coworkers, this town, and those he served. He left Chicopee and he reapplied to be a part-time officer with us. This full-time position opened and he has convinced us that he is in it for the long run. He calls this place his second family and we wouldn't have it any other way. Harry's character is unquestionable and he is quite possibly the most polite, calm, and collected person we all have the honor of knowing. Based on this, I am recommending that Harry Santiago be hired to fill one of the two vacancies that we have for full-time police. Perfect. I guess it says it all that you uh, <laughs> want to come back to us, which I'm very happy about. We didn't, we didn't like it when you left us, Harry, but we could understand your, your need to with family. So um, any motion or anything else yeah. anybody has to say? No. Gladly no. welcome Harry back into the Hadley fold. And uh, make a motion to accept the promotion of Harry from special police officer to full-time police officer. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, welcome Harry. Welcome Congrats, Harry. Congrats, Harry. <laughs> See you on the streets. We are. <laughs> um, Can we keep Mitch here? Why yeah, I was just gonna of, say, let's, yeah. just, let's just do, Mitch, you're gonna do the police lieutenant update job description and then you're done with us for tonight. Thank you. Had a long day, sir. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so uh, before you are two job descriptions for the lieutenant uh, in charge of operations and the lieutenant in charge of administration. As part of the, as part of growing the department, uh, we found it necessary to add a, another lieutenant to the department and uh, are, you'll find in our neighboring departments where there are two second-in-commands, either lieutenants or captains, uh, those roles are generally split into lieutenant of operation, uh, the, the commander of operations and the commander of administration. So that's the only difference is that they are now broken into two parts, being the operations and administration, because there's just too much for, for one person to do. And um, with regards to the administrative lieutenant, those responsibilities would also include duties uh, revolving around the post administration, which is the police officer standards and training, as well as the accreditation manager duties as, uh, as well. Okay, so we just have one for the lieutenant in charge of operations. Correct. Now, uh, now. correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. He does this all. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yes, and, and does it very well. Thank you. But we appreciate it. But sometimes uh, you're looking a little thin, <laughs> so sometimes that uh, people do get stretched a little bit to the max, um, and that happens sometimes when you have a department that is small, and you try to, you know, do everybody's job, you know, um, or do everything that you're supposed to do, and um, sometimes it's by the time you go home, and I, I've been there having been a nurse, that sometimes when you go home at the end of the day, you hope that you were able to do everything that you were supposed to do, but sometimes you get home and you go, oh, shit, I forgot to do something, you know, and, and that's how you feel sometimes, and, you know, you shouldn't have to feel that way because you have a lot of things um, going on that sometimes just doesn't allow you to get things done and it doesn't feel good at the end of the day. So I, I get it. Um, so I motion, motion to accept that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're in the process of um, 
doing the lieutenant, so this is why we've done these two separations? That is correct. Uh, the process for the lieutenant is, uh, has just begun, and the uh, process for promotion to sergeants is just wrapping up. Mm -hmm. And the last of the two hiring of full-time officers is part of this whole process to move and basically backfill from as a result of promotions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So motion to accept the police lieutenant updated job description as presented. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Away we go. Thank you all. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Too. Have a safe drive home. <laughs> all, right. all right. So we will step back one, and that will be. Um, Promotion of seasonal DPW worker to full-time highway laborer truck driver position at the DPW. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to uh, recommend Jesse Joe Hasmeyer uh, to be promoted to full-time uh, DPW staff. Uh, he is the brother of our truck driver laborer Jebediah and brother-in-law of Wade Vandalowski. So he's relatives of two guys in the family affair yeah it's a family affair uh he came to us this summer after he graduated uh high school to fill uh to help us out with our vacancy with the sick outage and the retirement uh we were having trouble at that point trying to find someone and he was recruited by his family to try to <laughs> come and work with us and he has been working out very well uh there is no problems with him uh, gets along with everyone good and he is uh, learning very well and even the uh, other staff at the DBW recommend uh, having him stay aboard full-time he is, he is fitting in very well yeah. nice and where's he in the licensing process Scott does he uh, he, he needs to get his licenses but uh, he already took the initiative to make appointments, so okay. he is he is doing good. And the CDL aspect, there's a there's a we have an agreement with him with that, so okay. uh, it shouldn't be a problem though no, with him to get them. But mm -hmm. he he did he was very proactive when uh, he applied, and then we made him the offer. He immediately made appointments and. Um, very grateful of that that he's showing a lot of initiative to uh move forward and on that note um before we've hired people that needed licenses we have usually given them a time frame so is there a certain time frame on on what we're expecting on first the cdl or what other licenses are you anticipating that he's going to need uh this he's he's has a six month probationary period which he would have to require those licenses. Uh, we're looking for him to get his CDL first. It's a little more important that we're gonna be coming into the winter months, but he, like I said, he does have appointments and the hydraulics license aspect is administered through the state and there still is a backlog on that. So depending on how things work out with them, it's, it's a waiting game, unfortunately, but the CDL aspect should be a lot more streamlined and, and smooth. Because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of classes around either for some of these other licenses that you need, correct? No, uh, the hydraulics license and stuff, we have a lot of different trading material at our office for mm -hmm. he can read and go over and stuff in. You know, watch, watching other people operate and do things mm -hmm. is, you know, valuable to it also. So he, which he has been doing. Okay. So I'll make a motion to accept the um, recommendation for the promotion of Jesse Johansmeyer. Is that how you say his last yes. name? Yes. Uh, to full-time highway laborer, truck driver position with the DPW. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Amy. Uh, Amy. Amy. <laughs> All right. Bye, you guys. You can go home. Hit the road. They don't Long want day. It's too We're exciting. <laughs> Unless you want to stay for only a couple more things. Yeah, sure. Um, 
Carolyn, special town meeting dates. Yes, special town meeting is scheduled for October 27th. It did come to my attention that it's also open house that night. Um, at the school? Mm. At the school. Oh. So a couple things. I, I, might, I did my due diligence to see which, uh, what alternative dates might be available, um, what was gonna work best um, as well for our clerk. Uh, so, my understanding is that you have had that happen at the same time in the past. Not the <coughs> ideal situation, we certainly don't want to lose participants at town meeting. Um, and the parking issue, I did talk with our Chief Spank Naval about the parking. He, he can make that work that night. The only other option is November 3rd, but I still need to check that date. I was not able to check that date with the schools yet to see if there's any other conflict. I doubt there's a conflict, conflict like open um, I'm sorry, about uh, um, There's no basketball, there's none of that. I can't say that. I don't think, there's nothing like no, that going on. No, basketball that season's over with. Yeah. So we're good on that. Yeah, it's, but open house. It'll be too that, dark that, for soccer, yeah. so. <laughs> I do remember we had a conflict one year. We couldn't mm -hmm. move it. Um, and uh, did the school department, did the superintendent or whoever you spoke with have a concern? No, because I think they, she, they also said that the only problem they felt was um, the parking. And of course, you don't want to have that opportunity where you don't have a resident who can't attend. Right. But usually, it's, I think they're kind of, it's rolling. They're coming in and out of there. So um, in some ways, it might be an asset for the quorum. Yeah, yes. You know, it's, it's hard to tell. But I really, I didn't want to make that judgment the, call. The, the, I, I time to does keep, open house start? Do, do we know? I think they start right at the same time. Oh, you know, open house might be a little earlier. earlier. I think it starts at like Probably six or six. six. Okay, yeah. might be earlier. Yeah. They might be done by then. Do you remember former moderator? No, I was not that was party not. to that. That was before okay. him too. So I just wanted you to, you know, if you want me to look another option, I can't go sooner. Um, no. That would be, I just don't have enough time. My thought is to go a different night just because of the parking and I don't think we're going to uh, have a, an issue with loss of participants that because they're going to open house because typically that's going to be younger people going to open house that don't show up at town meeting uh, but that's just my my opinion well let's see what the November 3rd availability is number one yeah and if it's not or something else is going on by whatever. Um, and what time? Anybody want to make a motion to change it to November 3rd? If the, if the date's available. You what time are they doing it at? Open house? No, no, no. The special meeting. Seven. 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 Is it going to go to like 11 o'clock like the last I one? I hope not. What time I'll walk. I mean, I'll have to walk out if that's the case. Huh? to walk out if that's the case. <laughs> you get up at 4 30 in the morning. <laughs> so my only concern is I, I'm trying to get the cobwebs off here but I remember part of part of the reason that we didn't change it last time was because it started bumping up on the tax um, setting the tax rate and stuff I think I think there was a little bit of, of a concern about getting into November so do we know that it's not a problem to go to November 3rd, Carolyn? No, I've checked with Dan. It's, okay. it's a little bit more work for, for Jessica because you're, you're getting close to the, um, Primary. the primaries. So right. it's not her favorite choice, but she, she will do it. But I, I felt like I needed to give you guys that option and make you aware of it. I didn't want you to be blindsided by mm -hmm. thinking you had this huge quorum of 400 people <laughs> I don't pulled into so. the parking lot. If we can yeah. get 100, we're lucky. I don't know, what is our, what have we got that would make people come? You will have uh, the resolution, the climate resolution, if that is going on as a non-binding question. Oh, that will. that'll take us all night on that one. And then you have, and I tried to kind of do an estimate based on what the capital requests were. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can't grant all of the capital requests. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at, you know, cleaning up prior year bills and some other adjustments with the budget mm -hmm. and going through some capital and CPA. I mean, I, I guess I don't, I don't really have a problem leaving it the same, only from the standpoint, and unless things have changed dramatically, which they could have. Um, open house, typically you're picking up the first year parents, right? I should say parents of first year students seventh, there. Seventh graders. So seventh graders, graders, 
maybe ninth graders. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of parents, they go initially, um, you know, certainly transfer students, maybe school choice kids coming in. Touch base with the teachers. Yeah, I, you know, and there actually was some advantage last time because some people did, you know, because when you go through open house, you drift through, you go to the different classrooms, and then go to town meeting. I think he, even Amy had commented on that. Certainly, we did it outside at the soccer field, and we needed the quorum. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, right. That's. That, I mean, that, I don't. I don't mind keeping it for the twenty seventh. I don't. It, it's not a big deal. I, mean, I was just concerned mostly with the parking, but to to the point of being able to go grab people out in the hall if we are close to a quorum. Yes, that's mm -hmm. that's a good thing because that the soccer field helped us have a meeting mm -hmm. because yeah. without it we wouldn't have gotten a quorum. So. Uh, I'm fine if it stays the 27th. Let's just keep it the 27th. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Yep. okay. That was easy. Kind of. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Jane, pro rating license fees. Yes. Uh, we recently had a request for. Um, a license to be prorated, automatic news unit, that can get pretty costly when you have a lot of the machines. Um, so FunHub had requested a prorating, and so I'm bringing it to you. Um, generally, um, what are the guidelines for prorating? Uh, it's up to you to have a discussion and decide the value of it for our businesses. Um, and um, if it's just for applicants who apply after July 1st, if it's for all applicants, if we're just going to prorate half a year if they apply after July 1st, um, obviously not daily rates, um, don't know about quarterly rates, and is it a per individual basis or is it overall for any licensee who comes in after July 1st? So just I think it's over. always been by case by case on when they start up their business. Um, what's the timeline on their license? Is it a um, certain one we're talking about? It's from now until December, so it's actually a quarter. Um, you know, certainly something like that. And again, I think we've always done it on a case-by-case -case basis, whether it be water and sewer. Uh, we've done those, um, prorated them. We've done them on increments of paying. You know, but that doesn't fall in with licensing. That's a totally different issue, but I mean, yeah, we want to be fair, fair across the board. Exactly. And treat people equally. So, I mean, a case by case basis, but I think if someone applies for a license and it's in August or September, that certainly that's something that we would be able to look at for pro rating, I, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would say we could look at it. I just don't know how finite we want to get with the pro rating. Uh, as you know, we definitely don't want to do it on a day, daily basis. So, to Jane's point, do we go quarterly, a half year, whatever? Um, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, do we know what other municipalities are doing, Jane? Um, overall, they tend to prorate, um, you know, just because some of the licenses are bigger. And, mm -hmm. and if you get into um, like a business such as this, where they have an alcohol license and they have the automatic right. Right. And device licenses, it adds up pretty quickly for a new startup. So um, we tend to, to prorate fairly regularly, I think, overall. You have prorated in the past mm -hmm. since oh, I've yeah. been here. For yeah. sure. Yeah. But I think we're looking for a little mm -hmm. clarification. Mm -hmm. And how, how, what was the prorating? Was it quor by quarter, by half? It depended on when they came in and asked for it. Monthly? No, no, it definitely it would, wasn't monthly. monthly. It would be mm -hmm. like six months. Uh, yeah. Mostly it's a six month one. Yeah, I don't remember doing a quarter, but it, we may have if it was, um, like Jane's saying, something that was really expensive. Mm -hmm. But typically it's been, a, I think, a half. Or just starting up their business now where you would only have this many months to mm -hmm. have a license and then turn around and pay for the whole license again in January or the end of December for the next year. Right. So that would be something to look at. So are, are they asking, are you asking us to prorate this license tonight? He's, he's requesting. So, you know, then, you know, and I'm asking what is the standard when you set one? Because often boards do set them. I would say that would be, my thing would be able to prorate since we want them to start up their business. We get more money 
if you start up a business than if you hold them off, you know, so you might as well help them out. But we don't have an actual ask here. Yeah, yeah it's not on the agenda. So if this is really a discussion and then if they a decision, yeah. Well, the, it's not listed on here as a specific business yeah. to be voted on tonight. Yeah. Well, I think she wants to vote on a policy, not the But like Right, we can have a discussion and decision on what we want to do moving forward, but in the case of this specific business, it would have to go on the next agenda. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. He's going to be okay. opening that. So. Huh? He'll be opening this coming week. So. In order to add the machines. But it would have to, like, you'd have to have it on this because you have to have option for public comments, right? Is that how that works? I'm not the licensing. Oh. Well, so no. if we, no, we, think we don't have to, but we don't, we don't have uh, yeah. we don't have comments well, by um, people on opening businesses. Usually, the licensing is just within our purview. Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally don't care. I just don't want any um, more issues I think with we, this board. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. if if there was no need to prorate a license. The, the applicant would come to you, you would say it's X amount of dollars, pay the fee, they get the license, correct? Mm -hmm. So they don't have, not everybody has to come before the select board to get their license approved. No. So if, if oh, I understand. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, we approved this license. But the fee, the fee, we don't, we don't, we don't. approve the fee, right? Yeah. So the way I look at this is, Jane is asking us to make a policy that would allow her to prorate the licenses. That, that's what I thought this was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, then yeah. that we can, I believe we can vote so, on because that's what right. I see is being asked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the specific applicant, has that been, a, is, was that part of the? No. Yeah. So no, that's, that's. By decision. So essentially we can make a decision tonight. It'll be a blanket one that moves forward, moving forward for everybody. So if they come to you after, we're covered for anybody. But he's opening this week. But we don't have to, would we have to vote on it if we vote on a blanket well, policy? Well, his license. No, we're just, we would give Jane the, uh, the ability to prorate based on whatever we decide the formula is going to be. So now I'm going to go back to what Amy said before, because if it's really, this is now we're affecting a, a specific a support policy. Mm -hmm. And it's just coming up for the first time and we're kind of making it up on the fly with no information in front of us. Okay. So I'd rather vote on this request if we have to tonight, but then. Is, is the in information about this request that business on here? No, no, we don't no. have numbers yeah, or anything. That you can't do. Yeah. Right. When, so he's opening this week. Yeah, I was gonna see if you could pull together a phone call. Um, so it's a, board already, meeting. You've already voted under um, the consent um, for him to increase from 15 to 20. Six, to add six machines, basically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he yep. had a current license mm -hmm. for 20 some odd machines. So oh, so he is on there. He was on he the consent agenda. He is for the consent agenda. Just to increase his licenses. Not to address his no. fee proration. Yeah. In the past, you haven't made any policy. You should just, I guess, I think well, that person's not that. So we approved his... He approved his, li his request for increase. The right. pro-rating, is that based on that increase? So his increase, I think, is going to be about $600. So going to is to that pay. what's, we would be, would this policy affect that? Yes. Yes. Then you're fine. No, that was fine. my original question. Is it, was it on the consent? But I, no, but I think he's asking for, as a whole, he's looking for a pro-rating for all of his licenses since no. he applied after July 1st. No, he's, right? already paid for he's already paid. And this is just the addition of that. The additional one. one. That he, what we did on that the you just approved agenda. On, during the consent. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're okay. fine. Okay, so just so we're good. So it's six hundred dollars would be the annual fee. No, that's just for those six licenses. But I mean, so that's we've got thirty-one machines times hundred dollars a machine. It's a lot of money. And he'll have to come up with again in December for his renewal, besides his alcohol license. But he's already paid the twenty-six hundred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
And so he's not asking for twenty this twenty six hundred to be prorated. No, just, just the, the next one. Next one. That's what I'm trying to figure that out. That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, that's he, that was his ask. Well, because so he didn't have the machines before, we just approved them tonight. Correct. But he's not even open, so he, and he already paid after July first for his other stuff. Right. So you think he'd be asking for all thirty one machines? No, he already paid it. He would have to he abate paid. it. He already paid. We can't. We can't change what he's already paid. Okay. But we can prorate the so the six hundred. I'm okay with prorating the six hundred today, but I think that's a decision that we can make today on the fly. But when it comes to coming up with a policy for moving forward, I think that's something we should discuss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that for the future. I if from my understanding, and, and, and I, I don't cross over to the licensing and all of that, but I think that was the request, the is that to look at moving forward, you know, is it case by case, or do you, are, is, there, is there the will the select board to consider prorating licensing? Is that right? As a standard. As a standard. Standard rules so that everybody's treated fairly and it's mm -hmm. possible. I'm all in favor of having a standard rule where everybody's treated fairly. Yep. Correct. Yeah. That ends people having to consistently come in, which you yeah. said earlier. Right. More with the right. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm personally more in favor of a quarterly, um, but that's just for me working on a business that's <laughs> on the S&G 500. <laughs> Everything's done quarterly mm -hmm. in my world. <coughs> yeah, I think S monthly or. Yeah. Daily is way too much, <clears throat> um, and I'm fine with quarterly as as well. But again, so so for him tonight, then. So when does the quarter start, right? So uh, if we prorate, he'd be paying for two 30th? quarters. Well, got or just one, because he's opening in October or September. He's opening in September. So September, October, November, December, four months. And I just have one more question. Is it based on calendar year or fiscal year? Calendar, calendar January year. January to December on the licenses. Okay. Just double checking. All licenses are are that. Just double checking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just wanna yeah. in case anyone in the ether. Get a phone call. So <laughs> Okay. So motion on that at well, all. Well hang on, what what were you saying now? About how much you wanna you wanna prorate this? Is that what you're saying? We we want we're voting to prorate this, and what is the formula we're using for this particular well, so that's, one? So that's what I'm saying. If we were if we're really thinking quarterly is appropriate, yes. Mm -hmm. Even if you fall into the thirtieth day of your right, you're picking up the whole quarter. So we would basically cut the six hundred and half to three hundred. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Motion. Like, Oh, sorry. Motion, motion to um, prorate the application, the fee for the application of the additional equipment um, from six hundred dollars to three hundred. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And we're out. All right. Let's see. Town administrator. Anything? Uh, Miss Klamaski. 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 Oh yes. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm white. I've gone down the path here. All right. So, APR Klamaski co-holder approval form certificate of approval for irrigation and well cemetery road. Um, documentation. So, who's going to speak on so, this? So, so I can. Are you Ray? Uh, no. no. Okay. Sure. Is Ray? Okay. So let me. I'll just. I'll. I'll do this explanation. Um, this is so. MDAR and Hadley are co-holders of the KT Klamaski APR, and they are requesting um, in order for them to uh, put a well in for irrigation, it, the the, the co-holders have to approve of it. So this is a request for Hadley to approve of that. Um, so I wanted that discussion to come up. I don't know if there's anyone here to talk. Um, Ray, who was the requester, was going to be on, but I don't see him on there. Um, so this also um, is going to go before 
conservation and the health department. They need more time to take a look at it, but I was hoping. I can see where the conservation commission was because it abuts the Connecticut River. Well, it but doesn't I, abut the Connecticut that, River. This is right on Cemetery Road, Joyce. This is yeah. this is uh, the corner of West Street and Cemetery Road, uh, where the greenhouse is on the left-hand side, right across from the cemetery. I believe is what I'm looking at here. And uh, if I remember correctly, <coughs> Klamaski bought that property. Well, Klamaski sold it. Right? Yeah, but I mean that's when when he put it in APR. So I'm pretty sure that's the piece that we're looking it's at. It's behind here. the house on the corner of West Street. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So there, it doesn't abut the river. They're asking to allow us to let them, or we're asking us to allow them to dig a well. Or Why would the Board of Health be involved yeah. in that? If it's for irrigation, it would be non-potable water anyway. Non-potable water. Well, yeah. Why would the board Scott had something to say about that earlier. So, what what did you say about that, Scott, as to why the board of health would be involved? I can see why conservation is. Just in, in some areas, the board of health gets involved because there is potential for people to drink that water. Period. Uh, even though it's non-potable, someone could drink it, and it's a penetration into the aquifer, and there there could be septic in the area that could leach into the well. There's multiple factors involved. In some areas, the Board of Health does get involved with making a decision on this for the best interest of the stakeholders, which is the Water Commission, I guess, in our protecting our aquifer. Hmm. It's, just, it's just another point of concern. Anytime, anytime you put a penetration into the earth, into the aquifer, there's potential for contamination okay. and our uh, health agent um, he's from the Boston area so mm -hmm. um, he has not dealt with this before <laughs> um, so he just needed a little bit more time <laughs> so get all the club and risk yeah <laughs> and we may find that there is no that you that you are correct that there is no involvement but I think based on these concerns we wanted to cross all the T's so okay. so That's what do fair. we need to do tonight so I was hoping Ray would be here. I had spoken with him earlier and he was, so I hope he didn't have trouble getting on or anything like that. But um, I think what we'll, we'll wait to hear from Conservation and uh, Board of Health, and then hopefully Ray will can be here at the next meeting. Okay. okay. If you would like, if, if that's what you would like. I mean, you certainly can make a motion to, to accept it or to, be, to, to agree with signing on, but if you want more information. I think it makes sense to wait. He's not going to be irrigating anymore this season. It's good, definitely going to be for next year. So yeah. I think it makes sense to wait and get some more information. We were concerned, Randy, too, because it, it did say in his spec it was a little deeper than just a normal yeah, I see that. shallow going, irrigation wall. So there was, there was some concern uh, from myself and the, uh, Tony Horton that runs the water plant. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to make sure that we weren't allowing something that maybe we should not. Okay. Okay. Let's wait. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and move but to move to, to uh, sure, table, table it. Discussion. Table it for mm -hmm. further discussion. Another meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Now, town administrator, do you have anything for us? This I do. Evening? I do. I first want to let you know that the. Um, uh, Early voting went well, and elections went well. Um, special kudos to our clerk to, for Jessica. Um, I, I it's uh, early voting is a tremendous amount of extra work, and Jessica made that happen. And it was a tough. If you saw her today, she had very tired looking eyes. It was a long. <laughs> it, it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. It's long hours and weekends and stuff like that. So I just want a, a special recognition recognition to our clerk, Jessica. Um, I also wanted to let you know that capital requests are in, and um, I will be um, talking with Paul um, to set up those capital uh, planning committee meetings to take a look at those requests. Uh, I also wanted to let you know it's kind of um, some two challenges, two challenges that you've actually heard some of it today. 
um, that we're, we're definitely having um, is one is, is hiring. Um, we are definitely having a problem. We have a position in wastewater that is a critical position that uh, we are having difficulty hiring. There's a lot of competition out there and there's a lot of, it's almost like house wars where the, the, the prices of houses are going up higher and higher and we're just having that battle with communities. Um, all the communities around us are having trouble. So I just want to, um, we've got some challenges ahead of us with, with hiring. Um, it's, you know, so letting you know about that. And also um, our procurement, again, it's happening in other communities. What we're, our original scope of work when we're going out to bid, we think is going to cover it. And it, it's not covering it. And we're off by, in some cases, twenty to $30,000. Um, so that we did have to, um, we're taking a look at trying to uh, do, uh, fund a project. We'll be meeting with the Finance Committee tomorrow. Um, it was the, um, the sewer pump roof replacement. Those came in per, uh, higher than what we had estimated. So um, I'm seeing this trend, and I just wanted to make you guys aware of it, that um, we're having to redo some, some um, bidding and um, procurement, and um, we're trying to see how we can fund these projects. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up of those two challenges that we're facing. Uh, we did have our kickoff meeting for the streetlight conversion. That is going to happen at the end of October for about four days, we think it's going to take. Um, so that's going to move forward. Looking forward to those cost savings and our subsidy to be returned back, that we'll be returning back to ARPA. And um, let's see, just an update on the Connor Lodge and move-in seemed to go well. Um, I, I know Tommy was out there. He is satisfied with some things that are happening there, and um, they are following w up with some some recommendations from our you know departments that do inspections there. So it seems to have, this is the f first full weekend, so that they'll be here. So it seems mm -hmm. to be going well. So I think that is it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Select board members items for future discussions. So there's a few that we're going to have um, for future. And if you have anything else to add, um, certainly chime in when I finish. Uh, we have the Chamur Road trailhead issues. Um, and we have some issues out that end of the town with parking um, and other things. So we're going to put that on another agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, I would say next, uh, the next agenda. Next agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have Carolyn's evaluation. Um, looking at possibly doing a 360. Um, we, I was thinking that either you or Molly or Randy really hasn't had the opportunity to uh, work alongside Carolyn since it's a short period of time then you've been elected. So I think it would be unfair to do an actual evaluation of her, um, a full board. Um, the thought is to do a 360 eval, which mm -hmm. would make people that are uh, working with her on an everyday basis, our HR director, our police, our fire, um, DPW, everybody that she comes in contact to have a chime in on um, how things are going at Town Hall and, and, and go that route. And then in six months, we may be able to do another evaluation on our end of it. Um, just a thought that we could still have a future discussion <coughs> on that too to see what you think about it. Yeah, and the other thing I, I thought about after um, it came up at a previous meeting when we were talking about it, and we were talking about, you know, if Carolyn hasn't presented goals, how do you evaluate her? Because in the past, we would evaluate people on goals. Mm -hmm. But then I went back and I, I looked at just a town administrator job description that you were hired for, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know, probably a good starting point until we have, you know, more personalized goals from you, Carolyn, going forward. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't that make sense to be like for key accountabilities, they're right in the job description. And I think we thought that after town meeting, she would have a better opportunity to give us her goals and what to expect within the next mm -hmm. six months and then give us, let us have that opportunity to do evaluate at that time. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Yep. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So that's a thing, and, and certainly we don't want to make that decision without Jane being here, um, since she brought up the evaluation. So right. um, to discuss it at you know at the future meeting on that, would that be okay? Yes, ma'am. Finally. Okay. Um, just um, use of town property, mm -hmm. um, and 
evaluating that and we don't really have a bylaw or policy per se on the use of it by residents um, town employees or any of the officials so we want to have maybe the bylaw committee take a look at that and see what you know we need to get get something in place on, on that aspect of it too so that again is for a future topic um, and then anything else for our agenda Would anybody else have anything that we should be discussing down the road um, I think at the last meeting we brought up or I brought up that property um, yep that's the 21st the 21st yep. okay so yep. that's gonna be on there okay. um, and then tonight just the follow-up items from tonight in terms of the um, proration Pro rate. of and the, fees and, and okay. the yeah. permit process yep and the procurement mm -hmm. or for the um, licensing process itself yep, yep. okay so help me with that what uh, what can I provide for you to help you guys out with that discussion the licensing yeah well I think um, kind of the way it transpired in, in the past because um, I think I alluded to the fact that there you know there was a streamlining that was presented to us um, several years ago which was based on kind of the, the stumbling blocks. So at that time, uh, the town administrator and uh, the licensing coordinator brought a proposal to the select board saying, based on these pitfalls, um, we got together with building inspector, police, fire in yep. particular, DPW, um, and they, they themselves came up with recommendations and then that came to us and that's how this kind of sign off sheet came into being. Mm -hmm. So from my standpoint, because I mean, we're not in the weeds all day long, and like Randy alluded to the fact that there were some, you know, concerns that get brought up on that Tuesday meeting. Um, maybe Jane could go back uh, knowing what she knows now about things that don't go smoothly, and then yeah, that and can come back. And I think added on to that is I will be meeting with Ben, uh, the health inspector, um, we're we're going to try it. We tried today and it didn't work out. But we're going to try next week. He has he has experience in that, and I know that Shyla Conservation has also been in, in you know wanting to be involved with that. But he wants to get together and you know pick Jane's brain, pick all the, the department heads who are involved, and to look at templates that they've used on what the process has been. Because mm -hmm. um, I do I think it's a great idea, especially publicly, to share that because. I think people think it just somebody puts an application in and it gets on the board docs and mm -hmm. so many steps happen mm -hmm. and always challenges and always bumps so I think mm -hmm. it's I think it's excellent mm -hmm. yeah yeah Ben was concerned yesterday about let's have a checklist you know for this particular item you need to go see da 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 x x x x or no x in that box no license right it's just yeah I think what when people see a, a, a piece of paper they have to fill out that the expectations are different than what the reality ends up being and i think that it would take a lot of stress off people if it was more out there like this is what you need to do this is the realistic timeline so don't like hand welcome this in honest, yeah well it's like well don't hand this in and then expect it in a couple of days or maybe educate new business owners or something hey if you're looking to do this this is what you need to do mm -hmm. and yeah and that usually starts actually when they come in yeah. and um, talk to the building inspector in, in that department and asking what they need to do if they're in the process of uh, opening a new business or um, then they usually give them the direction well you've got to do the planning yes board. dd does do that you know yep. mm -hmm. so yeah. they have a certain pattern that they give everybody when they come in so I mean they've already streamlined that herself and yeah. they can actually do it on the web um, actually to to get their things straight right but sometimes opening a new business you're extremely overwhelmed it's like a college graduate signing up for health benefits <laughs> right it's a good analogy whether they yeah. need it or can not. confirm <laughs> <laughs> absolutely all right anything else uh, under that we're anyway. good? Okay. Jane, How about I, I can illuminate you that I, I have done this in another community. I help to gather people together in a great way. And your departments are on board. They've already tried, you know, they're trying very hard to mm -hmm. function in the project meetings for so it helps 
a lot for all of us to be on one page. Um, but I, I have gone over with Ben and created a list of, you know, of um, how to, you know, who goes where, when, why, and why. It can be put on the website. Um, yeah, I mean, just because you guys are busy already. So that was my main thing earlier is that it just, expectations, reality, and, and being overwhelmed and having a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, that's all, all right. I got. Sounds good. Um, we're gonna, it, does anybody have any uh, liaison reports tonight from, from their departments? There's a new section for us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Inspection. Uh, yeah. This is a new section for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can go quickly. Okay. Um, so, uh, two things. So, uh, I'm the liaison to the town financial, man the basically financial financial team. management team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, I actually attended the first, uh, for the first time, the financial management team meeting. So, that was good. Um, I like the reports um, have been revamped a bit. They're uh, kind of one stop shopping, nice summary schedules now. That are being presented. I'm not going to get into the financials, but just you know that um, that that was a good start. And plan is to attend those uh, not every single one, but once a month, mm -hmm. um, along with Amy um, from the finance committee. Mm -hmm. And then for the university, uh, we started the negotiations for the annual community agreement, mm -hmm. which is different from the separate issue with the Econo Lodge. So Carolyn is taking point on the Econa Lodge, um, and at that financial management team meeting, um, we discussed a kind of initial ask um, for her to go back to the university with. So let, let her give us an update on that when the time comes. Um, and then in terms of the other, again, it was just a kickoff meeting, but I think um, at the, you know, we may have the opportunity to do something a little bit different than we've done in the past um, financially. So. I think the university is in better shape, and um, as part of that, typically what we do is reach out to department heads that we know are impacted. So I think the more information we can get from police, from fire, DPW, Board of Health, um, you know, anybody that feels that uh, there's a, been an increase in workload or additional tasks and activities um, that, you know, the town is absorbing at this point. It would go a long way for us to be able to present that to them. Uh, this might be a good year to do it. So that's all I have to say there. Okay. Randy? Uh, Carolyn mentioned earlier about Capital Planning Committee. I'm the liaison there. And hopefully we're going to start meeting very soon and just go over some things. Um, that's all I've got. Okay. Anything um, for you, Amy? I know that the they're looking at doing that climate change so September 22nd yes there's a public hearing yes so you're going to moderate they're going to have looking a, they're at gonna, a venue yeah that that. the venues here from what I understand their their meeting is tomorrow night their monthly meeting whatever is tomorrow night here and they're going to discuss that uh, information forum which is scheduled for the 22nd and I believe it's here Okay. Um, the Russell School, I uh, had some members drop off a few of them and... Drop off meaning? Leave. Quit. Oh. Because <laughs> you're such a taskmaster. Uh, yeah, I think there's two members that have quit so far. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Really Any particular reason? Um, I think uh, one individual was looking at trying to make it more of like an art exhibit and didn't really want to be part of the... Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think it may it? help, and that might be in the future. You know, I, I think, think we need to clarify the charge for that committee. That might be um, helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good for maybe to sit in on a meeting if you had the time. Me? Yeah, just... Looking Absolutely. for money and and doing reinspections and quotes and, that, and that's and where I think the charge and, and I think let's put this on the next let's put this yeah. on the twenty first so I, I I do have some suggestions I think we yeah. do need to do a specific charge and what the expectations are from the select mm -hmm. board 
So yeah, because everyone like I went to the first meeting and everyone had you know wonderful intentions, but it was um, there was a lot of directions. Yeah, it, yeah, which there, means they don't have a clear direction. Yeah, yeah. there was like so, just a lot of. Let's put down the twenty first. It was. I mean, it was good, and then I was in on a Zoom meeting, and um, yeah. There's definitely passion, so I will say, yes, I'll say that is. for them. Yeah, there it is. All right, anything else? That's all I got. That's it. Um, I'm just what do you have? Just an intro <laughs> after this. Um, this gentleman probably should have spoke up at public comments, but he's having a craft fair. A craft fair. Oh. Yep. Okay. Oh. He's got all of his ducks in a row, so he doesn't require any licensing structure. Hmm. Just to sure. Do you want to speak now before me? That's yeah. fine. Oh, thanks for waiting. Yeah, yeah sorry. We, we, we didn't have executive <laughs> session, so we kind of. I just thought you were just a, a bystander, <laughs> curious, <here. laughs> wanting to see the action here. So um, my name is Greg, and I own Barnout Back in Hadley, Massachusetts, oh, okay. which is a um, vintage and um, gift shop. Mm -hmm. um, I do sell prepackaged Greg's goodies, which is my other business, kind of a jack of all trades. Um, but this is kind of the culmination of my um, my whole life's work with you know working in retail, going to culinary school, all of it. So um, basically, I want to take it to the next level. Now that this is our third year, I'd love to do a, a craft event with 10 vendors, keeping it very small, um, in my side field. Um, I have plenty of room for that. I did go through the planning board, so they saw what I was doing. And I also have someone that's um, an ex-state trooper, that's a friend of mine that will be running the parking situation. Mm -hmm. um, and she runs it for the Deerfield Craft Fair, which is much bigger than what I'm expecting. Um, but it's something that I just um, think that would be great. Um, I'd be doing it for October 2nd, which is a Sunday, and um, from 10 to 5. And basically the vendors that will be there will be um, clothing and um, there's one person from a floral shop. Um, there's a jewelry guy that I know, and I'm still working on that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Cool. Basically, Sounds I just great. want to and, let you know. The location that. is. Tell is Lawrence 30 Plain Lawrence Plain Road in Hadley? Mm -hmm. Plain Road. Lawrence, yeah, Lawrence Plain, Plain Road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 31. Yeah. So. It's the barn out back. Right. <laughs> When you drive right by, there's a barn yeah, out back. Yeah, it's, it's my barn <laughs> behind my house. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Yeah. Next to Tony Sabascos? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. my cousin. Okay. Tony's yeah. your cousin. It's yes. before Adair. Okay. Right. Yes. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, Jane, you say he, he needs no other permits. He's good to go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's been to the other departments, and he doesn't have anything that you need to approve, but he's coming here to let me know if he does have I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you yeah, for having you're your welcome. stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> well, good luck and maybe Thank we have you. To stop yeah, by. come on, come on by yeah, and on check over. it out. Sounds so, great. Yeah. 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 Well, Thank good you. luck. I Thanks. almost stopped because Thanks I saw you had cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I do that on set and I'll have them for the event. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You got one customer coming. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Oh, this is flat. Do you have a liaison report? I, I do. I have uh, I have nothing to report from the school department. They're up and running. Um, <laughs> That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, but we have uh, nothing to report for tonight. Um, the police department already gave their report for tonight with police and dispatch, so we're we're good in that area. Um, the fire department, um, we have the ambulance has arrived from Northampton and we want to give a big thank you to Northampton to finally getting it here. And they also included the auto stretcher, which is a uh, big money thing Huge. for them to, um, to, to give us also, and that was included in the ambulance. So 
that was also uh, a nice gift from Northampton. So thank you to Northampton. Um, they're going to be going over a lot of details and things and looking at the ambulance and seeing what needs to get done. So this is just the start of it. Could be a few months. It'll be a few months for sure. Uh, we are in the process of hiring a full-time paramedic firefighter. Uh, we had interviews and uh, we're in the process of now waiting for the necessary paperwork and um, approvals and things all going forward with this person. So that will be brought up at another meeting. Um, who this is, um, Ambulance Committee. Molly was uh, named the chairperson of that committee. Um, the calls are up and uh, things are looking good in that area. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, more or less. I mean, it's uh, you know, seeing that we have it's an ambulance that we want to get <laughs> yeah. that we want to get into use. It's a it's a good thing that the the calls are are there to right. possibly and hopefully support it. So right. down the road, exactly. Good the numbers road. go up over the weekend, Mitch. Yeah. 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 Well, now with everything back into full swing, we'll see how that goes. Correct. Um, and I did have two, I, that's all I have for the liaison committees. Does have, anybody have any? 9-11? Um, I was going to do that too. That's what I was hoping. Okay. I oh, wanted. so 9-11, there will be a ceremony at the North Hadley uh, sub-fire station on 9-11. Uh, um, um, and it'll be, uh, the start will be at 9-45. So everyone is invited to attend and... Um, at the ceremony if they wish to. Mm -hmm. um, also on Sunday is Chicken to Go for the Legion. Um, not sure what tickets are available at this point. There's a 12 o'clock and uh, 4.30 setting for tickets. So there, um, I'm sure there are some members out there to get, get their tickets. Um, and then I did have two um, condolences this evening. Did anybody else have anything else? No. Um, we had the passing of Joan Weinzick. Um, she and her husband owned uh, Weinzick Excavating Company on River Drive, and the sons own it now. Um, certainly a, a big family person here in town for a number of years. Um, so our condolences to her family. And then we had Gary Fidenkevich that passed away last week. Um, condolences to Brenda and his daughter Megan. Um, he was uh, also the co-owner of Split Excavating in Megan Valley um, and also was a co-founder of the um, Motorcycle Club um, Chapter 132, the Freedom Cruiser Riders, and he was big. He was one mm -hmm. of the original persons that uh, started that club um, here in town, so our condolences to his family. And that's all I have. The only other thing that I forgot to share was we do have a star chef at the Senior Center. Is that tomorrow? SRHR manager Jen will be cooking. <laughs> Whoa. Remember where she comes from. <laughs> what, what are you cooking? <laughs> what are you cooking tomorrow? It's the lunchbox senior lunch that they can find. Usually Susan does when she's on vacation. Oh. You're it. Nice. <laughs> that you're actually doing a flare of something for tomorrow. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> That's it. That's it? Yep. All right. Nice. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> Sorry. So Who made the motion? No. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. All right. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.